Hi everyone, I'm Stuart from the Norfolk Honey Company and welcome to another Getting Started in Beekeeping. Today I thought we'd uh, take the chance to get out of the office and uh, come over to one of the apiary sites that I've got. The sun's shining, it's really warm today and I thought it would be an ideal opportunity just to give you a walk around one of my apiaries and show you the way things are set up and to just talk a little bit about what my plans are for this particular apiary to give you an idea as to how perhaps you would be thinking about your start of a new season as you progress into becoming a beekeeper. If you've already got bees then obviously you've probably overwintered the bees successfully now and within a few weeks time we'll be into the season proper. That's if you're here in the UK. Obviously around the world some people are already into the beekeeping season or coming to the end of their beekeeping season. So specifically here in the UK it's now late February, the weather is incredibly warm for the time of year and the bees are taking advantage of it. So let's just have a look at the apiary site and we can then talk a little bit about what's going on and how we would manage the situation leading into the spring. Just before we get started, if you haven't yet subscribed, please do consider subscribing. We've got lots more videos coming along for the new season and also a, a growing back catalogue of videos that you can catch up on. Uh, as you can see, I've got my bee suit on. It's not that we're going to be inspecting the bees, but at this time of the year, with it being a little bit chilly, the bees sometimes are not too grateful for us being too close to the hives. And I've got one or two colonies here that have a reputation for being rather unfriendly. So I thought I'd put my bee suit on. And on the subject of bee suits, I'm going to be taking a look at bee suits in a week or two's time. I'm going to one of the trade shows to take a look at some of the equipment, and I'm going to stop off at the BB Wear bee suits stand and have a good look at their equipment and see what bee suits they've got and hopefully show you the kind of bee suits that maybe you might like to buy. So uh, watch out for that video coming up but for the time being let's take the camera off the tripod and go and have a look at some of these beehives. So what we have in this site is a mixture of beehives. The hive on the left hand side, the green hive closest to us, is called a national beehive and that's probably the most popular beehive here in the UK. The one immediately to its right is called a commercial and it basically has the same footprint, the same area as the national but takes different frames and that's my preferred beehive. So as you can see we've got uh, different types here. My plan for this apiary is to remove all of the commercial beehives to another apiary site and have this site purely as a national beehive apiary. And hopefully that won't throw up any problems with interchanging frames. One of the big issues if you choose to have different types of hive is that the frames that fit inside won't necessarily fit between the different boxes. And so if you need to add some eggs or larvae from one colony to another because one of them's weak. If you try to add a frame from a national hive into a commercial hive, you'll find that you've got a lot of space around the frame and the bees will build brace comb. And if likewise, if you needed to move a commercial frame into a national hive, you wouldn't be able to do it because the frames are too big. So sometimes when we have a particularly large colony, it's useful to overwinter them, not just with the brood box, but with a honey box, a super as well. So this particular hive that you can see has got the stand, the floor, then there's the brood box, which is where the queen would normally be uh, contained. And above that, we've got a super and the super would have been full of honey um, full of stores for the bees in the winter and the one thing to note is that there's no queen excluder so we take the queen excluder away so that the queen and all the bees can move freely between the brood box and the super. So here we've got uh, two different configurations but basically the same process is happening. The hive on the left has been united with another colony that's been placed on top of them and you can see the old newspaper that we used to separate the two colonies prior to them 
chewing through it and mixing together. And the reason you put newspaper in is it helps to slow the process of the bees mixing. And by the time they've chewed through the newspaper, the pheromone generally has mixed sufficiently that they don't end up attacking each other and destroying lots of bees. And what you can see with the hive on the left hand side is that we have the brood box on the bottom, then there's a super, and then we've got the brood box on top of that. And this colony was united because the old queen that was in the top box was failing and there wasn't sufficient bees in that colony in order to get them through the winter. But as you can see from the entrance, the bees are bringing in pollen and they're doing really well. So we know that we've got lots of bees in there and there's a laying queen because the bees need the pollen to feed to the larvae. So if you see pollen going into a hive then you can fairly well safely assume that you've got a laying queen. The hive on the right hand side, the pale green colony, you might recognise from one of the other videos. This is the colony that is from the video Bees Behaving Badly and we tried to replace the queen by putting a new queen into this colony, but unfortunately she became a drone laying queen. And so it was then too late in the season for us to do anything about it. So we had to unite them with another colony. And again, we've got the newspaper there separating the original stand, floor and brood box. And then we've got the new hive. So the hive that had the badly behaved bees in it and the super that came with that colony. And they're in the top boxes with their original roof on the top. And again, the bees are flying really well. There's lots of pollen coming into that colony. So we're fairly happy that there's a laying queen in there and that they've settled down as well. And these two colonies, we will split. Once spring really gets going, we're going to split these colonies and produce queens for them. And then instead of two colonies, we'll have four colonies. This colony is rather boringly called number 15 and it's doing fantastically well. It's one of our strongest colonies and produces lots of honey and we're going to be breeding from this colony uh, this summer. And you can see the bees coming in with lots of pollen and that's predominantly hazel. I've had a walk around and seen bees foraging on hazel catkins and so we know that this area is really good for early spring forage. So here we've got um, two colonies. The one at the front is in a national hive and the one at the back is in a commercial hive. And what we're going to do is remove the commercial hive and uh, eventually move the national hive onto the stand. So we're in the process of moving the national stand closer to the concrete base because you want to move them no more than three feet at a time if you're moving them in the same apiary. So we've been moving this colony over a period of time now and I'm just going to move it one more time and put it closer to the concrete stand. So I've just moved it another 18 inches to two feet towards that concrete base and the next step will be to lift it up onto the concrete once we've removed the commercial hive and it's important that you only move them a small distance otherwise the bees that are out flying will come back to the original stand position and be completely confused and won't know where the hive is even though you might have only moved it six to eight feet away. And finally, this is a commercial nucleus colony. Uh, it was a swarm that we collected last year and we popped it into a, a nuke box and these bees are now building up nicely. We've put some sugar fondant on them. And you can see that they're eating that quite nicely. And so the bees will continue to eat the fondant. They're out gathering pollen and so I know that these bees are going to be great for moving into a full-size hive in the spring. And one final thing, the large stack of boxes that you can see over here are a mixture of supers and brood boxes 
that are all ready, they've got drawn comb in them and they're ready to go onto the beehives as soon as we get a nectar flow. So in this site we're prepared and ready for the spring to commence. Well I hope you found that interesting, please do hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. Don't forget to give us a thumbs up and share on social media outlets. Uh, I'm on Twitter, Instagram and now on Facebook as well so please do connect and we'll catch up next time. Thanks for watching.